We've now seen Elon comment on his urge to make an electric supersonic VTOL aircraft multiple times now. It was even featured in the Iron Man 2 movie where Elon Musk tells Tony Stark that he has an idea for an electric jet. That movie is from 2010 and most recently he went to Twitter to explain his desire for making such aircraft. So how will it work and most importantly when will we get to see it? Okay, so to explain this, we need to understand what VTOL means. VTOL stands for Vertical Takeoff and Landing, which means that the aircraft no longer needs a runway to take off or land, which makes it act more like a helicopter in those bases. But the thing about VTOL aircraft is that you usually have to have two types of engines. One type that makes it able to vertically take off and land, and another type for in-flight propulsion. You need this for a few reasons. First is the fact that you would waste a tremendous amount of energy taking off, since you would have to redirect the air that comes from the engines downwards to generate lift. This would be a very inefficient use of those engines, considering that engines capable of supersonic flight don't work as well at low speeds. So the aircraft's range would be greatly reduced if you went that route. Now that we have VTOL covered, it is the time to talk about supersonic. To be considered a supersonic aircraft, Elon's plane would have to fly faster than the speed of sound. And the speed of sound isn't just a set number that I can give you. Instead, it depends on the altitude at which you are flying and the temperature. But as most planes fly at around 35,000 feet or about 10.5 kilometers, and the temperature at that altitude is usually around minus 56 degrees Celsius or 217 Kelvin, we can calculate the speed of sound to be 1,063 kilometers an hour or 661 miles per hour also called Mach 1. But there is a problem with flying at the speed of sound since drag dramatically increases right around Mach 1, which is why today's planes typically have an average cruising speed of around 900 km an hour or 570 miles per hour. So if you want to have an aircraft go supersonic, you actually need it to fly at speeds vastly higher than Mach 1. For example, when the Concorde was in service, it flew around Mach 2, which was the ideal speed for that aircraft to achieve the highest possible efficiency. But even if you increase the speed to Mach 2 or higher, you will still always have more drag on the aircraft flying supersonic than you would subsonic. Assuming you fly at the same altitudes, and altitude is where it really gets interesting. Air gets thinner the higher you go, so if you use a jet engine, you would need a certain amount of oxygen to have combustion. So airplanes must fly at an altitude that creates the least amount of drag whilst having enough oxygen to create combustion in the jet engines. That is why today's airplanes fly at 35,000 feet or 10.5 kilometers. But that is the advantage of an electric plane, since you don't have to create combustion and therefore don't need oxygen in the same way the jet engines do. This all means that an electric aircraft in theory could fly much higher than the combustion engine counterpart. But the problem electric aircraft will face flying at such high altitudes will still be the thin air surrounding it. Even though you don't need to create combustion, you still need to have enough lift to keep the airplane in the air. The only way to solve that problem is to go faster to combat the lower air density. This is where Elon's aircraft has its greatest advantage. You see, when you fly at higher altitudes, it as you know requires more speed but not thrust, which, as you also know, is because of the low air density. But in theory, this means that Elon's aircraft would be able to reach increasingly higher speeds as it climbs higher in the atmosphere, without needing a larger or more powerful engine to generate extra thrust. The only thing it would need to do in theory is to spin the fans faster which in a traditional engine would make it incredibly inefficient. But this is not the case with an electric engine. Electric engines are efficient at a wide range of RPMs, also known as revolutions per minute. 
meaning it could in theory spin the fans of the aircraft much faster than a regular plane could, especially at the altitudes at which it will fly. So at what altitude will Elon's aircraft fly? Well, it is hard to give a good answer to that question, but my theory is that it would fly at altitudes similar to the Airbus Seafer, which was capable of max altitudes between 65 and 70,000 feet or 20 to 21 kilometers. The Airbus Seafer is also the closest thing we have to what Elon is envisioning with his electric supersonic aircraft. Even though the Airbus Seafer didn't fly at supersonic speeds, it has shown the incredible efficiency you can achieve at those altitudes. Granted, it did have solar panels to further increase the range, nevertheless, it is a pretty significant step towards the planes of the future. Now is the time to address the elephant in the room. Battery energy density. To make an electric plane fly, you need a power source, and that power source is going to have to be batteries. And the main problem with them has been, and still is, the energy density. Currently, we have battery densities of around 250 watt hours per kilogram in cars like the Model 3 and Model Y. And to put that into context, jet fuel has an energy density that is 43 times that of a battery. This is why we haven't seen Elon, or anyone for that matter, do long haul electric planes yet. But how long will it be until battery densities catch up to what is required to fly Elon's plane? Well, Elon and others have put the bare minimum for making such aircraft possible at 400 watt hours per kilogram. The only problem is that batteries only increase in energy density by about 5% annually. So if we were to go off of that projection, we won't see these planes until 2028. But this is all assuming no battery breakthroughs. And luckily, we have a couple of possible candidates. First is the solid state battery. And all you really need to know about this technology is that it already exists in things like pacemakers. And the fact that it has potential to have energy densities about two to 10 times what we see in batteries today. But the main limitation currently is that it forms dendrites rapidly when recharged, which basically just means the energy density and longevity of the battery is very low. Other problems include the difficulty of manufacturing the batteries. But these problems are exactly what everyone who is working on these batteries are trying to address. And estimates put the timeline for these batteries to get figured out to be within the next five years. Obviously, predicting breakthroughs in technology is inherently difficult, but I believe that battery-powered aircraft have the potential for longer flights with less weight and batteries than what aircraft today have in fuel. If we can achieve a 10 time improvement in battery technology, which we definitely will, it's just a matter of time, we could suddenly have batteries that had energy densities of around 25% that of an airplane today. But it gets better. Jet engines currently only have an efficiency of around 50%, which means it only utilizes half of the fuel that it carries. This means that the electric plane would have 50% of the range that today's aircraft has, taking those things into consideration. That isn't bad, but it gets better. If you remember early in the video, when I explained air density, you would know that electric supersonic aircraft like the one Elon wants to build will have the capability and advantage of flying at higher altitudes, decreasing the drag and therefore increasing the range, as well as speed. And since drag reduces exponentially the higher you go, you could theoretically have an electric aircraft that has a greater range than what we see today with combustion engine aircraft. The other breakthrough is something we are very likely to hear about in about a month's time when Tesla will hold its Battery Investor Day. That breakthrough is a dry battery electrochemistry, which was pioneered by a company called Maxwell Technologies. They got acquired by Tesla in May of last year and have gone dark ever since. 
but fortunately we have some very interesting information that correlates perfectly with Elon's electric aircraft. You see, Maxwell had a timeline for when their battery would reach higher energy densities and interestingly enough, it showed when it could reach an energy density higher than 400 watt hours per kilogram, which according to this graph would be around 2021 to 2022. And if those predictions are correct, the possibility for making an electric aircraft will be there. This leads me to the advantages of Elon's aircraft. First, we have fuel savings, which is the number one expense for airlines, and if they could remove the need for fuels, they would do so in a heartbeat. You will have to understand that airlines run on razor thin margins, meaning an increase in oil prices could have devastating effects on the industry as a whole and some airlines would go bankrupt as a result. The next advantage is speed, which is the next most important thing that airlines care about. They are constantly trying to balance speed with cost, so if they could remove their largest cost of running their business, along with a two or more fold increase in speed, they would be clapping their small hands. Another advantage is maintenance, which again is a huge cost for airlines because airplanes have millions of parts. For example, an A380 has 4 million parts coming from 1500 different companies and serviced regularly to keep the airplanes flying. Electric aircraft don't need as many parts for the simple reason that the engines only would require one moving part. Another thing is that Tesla is known for its manufacturing capability abilities, vertical integration, and the constant hunt for reducing parts in their cars. This would naturally carry over to a potential airplane that would have vastly fewer parts, lower complexity, and therefore a lower upfront cost along with lower running costs. Another thing is the VTOL part, which eliminates the need for runway, meaning you no longer have to take off and land in an airport, eliminating fees and the two parts that are changed the most, which are the wheels and brakes. The last thing that is a bit of a wild card, considering this is purely based on regulatory approval, is autopilot. A plane that could completely fly by itself would obviously eliminate the need for pilots, further decreasing the cost of running the aircraft. And the most dangerous part of a trip by plane is the landing part, and you could probably guess why. There is a lot of things that have to go right when landing an aeroplane, including weather conditions and the surface on which the plane will land. This is mostly eliminated if you can take off and land vertically, and this makes landing an airplane a lot more simple and safe. And considering Tesla is literally the front runners in full self-driving technology and software for cars, I believe they could easily make their VTOL aircraft fly completely autonomously. You will have to remember that flying is the safest form of transport and that most accidents happen because of a human error. So I believe there is a whole lot of upside to making this aircraft and even if battery technology doesn't improve tenfold in the coming years, we could still see short haul flights happen very soon. Which as you know will be enabled by a 400 watt hour per kilogram battery, which we might see next year or the year after that, assuming that Tesla shows the battery they have acquired through Maxwell at Battery Investor Day, which honestly is quite likely considering Elon did say he wanted to make an electric supersonic VTOL aircraft on Twitter so bad, but that his brain would melt if he did, implying that it is possible and that Tesla already has the battery tech to make it, but also implying that he has so much going on both with Tesla and SpaceX, his rocket company, while simultaneously having side projects, including the Boring Company, which is a tunnel digging company, and Neuralink, a company creating ultra high bandwidth brain machine interfaces to connect humans and machines. It's fair to say he has a lot going on, so I don't blame him for not wanting to pursue his electric aircraft idea, at least yet. But honestly, focusing on making electric cars might be a better use of his and Tesla's time considering the aviation industry only emits roughly 2% of the world's CO2 emissions and that Tesla's ultimate goal is to transition the world to sustainable energy. I am as excited as 
the next person about this aircraft, but we may have to wait at least a couple of years before Elon takes the challenge and creates this aircraft, and also it may take some years before we see the battery needed for this type of aircraft. But I am very excited and I am going to follow Tesla very closely in the coming months as the battery investor day is coming up and years as well as they have more products in the pipeline like the aircraft that we have talked about today. But I think that has been it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and subscribe. It's free and you can always unsubscribe if you find out you don't like my videos. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.